Hello and welcome back to part 4 of the Tortoise TDS fully explained series. In this video I will show you how we can use the diffusion model of the Tortoise TDS architecture and given a speaker conditioning which we already calculated in part 2 and the latent representations of the autoregressive model which we calculated in the last video in part 3 we will then use the diffusion decoder to generate a melt spectrogram. And yeah as always I would say we just jump right into it. Alright and the first thing that we will do for this is to initialize the diffusion sampler which is based on the space diffusion model which was introduced in the OpenAI paper from Darrival a nickel called diffusion model speed GANs on image synthesis and one idea that was introduced in this paper is a diffusion process which can skip steps in a base diffusion process meaning as you can see here our diffusion model was trained on 4000 diffusion steps but using the space diffusion we can sample or generate images performing only 250 steps which reduces the computational efforts 16 times while still getting similarly good mel spectrograms and the first thing that we will pass is the time steps the space diffusion model should use and what we are going to do here is to stride the 4000 diffusion step by 250 so by invoking the space time steps method we generate a list that has the 4000 steps strided into 250 steps and since this probably sounds a little bit confusing let's just have a quick look what this method returns here we can see that we have step 0 we have 16 32 so multiples of 16 and if we divide 4000 by 250 we get 16 so instead of having a list from 0 to 4000 we have a strided list from 0 to 4000 and it increases each time by 16 so this is what this method returns then we define the model meantime which is called here epsilon and this again doesn't sound super straightforward but what this actually means is that our model should predict the added noise epsilon and in case you're not familiar with how the diffusion model works so during training we have here our example image and increasingly add noise to our image so that at the end we have an image that is purely noise what we then can do is sample again a noisy image from a Gaussian distribution and iteratively on the backward process try to predict the noise that was added if we have a small amount added at each step this is possible so that's why we have the 4000 diffusion steps so we don't add all the noise at once but small amounts iteratively and then our model is able given a fully noisy image to iteratively denoise it and finally generate an image that looks realistic and has high quality and by stating epsilon here we tell our model it should predict the added noise epsilon and then we can also parse how the variance in the model should be handled and here it's a learned variance in a specific range so it determines how the model outputs the variance and handles it internally when denoising the model. Defining the loss type is also required but in our case not necessary because we only perform inference and not the training of the diffusion model. Then we define the betas with the get name beta schedule so again we can copy this and quickly have a look at the output of the method which is this one and now if we add shape we can see it's 4000 elements and what the beta schedule actually is it determines the amount of noise that is added during the forward process where we add noise to our realistic image and then how much is subtracted at each step when we denoise the image so therefore you definitely shouldn't change the beta schedule and it's a fixed one so if we call this multiple times we always get the same beta schedule which therefore is deterministic and it's important that this doesn't change because otherwise we probably would get really bad melt spectrograms or just noisy images overall. Then we define that we would like to generate our image conditioning free and you might be asking now why do we calculate all the conditionings we now generate the melt spectrogram without our conditionings because how would that make sense and as stated here conditioning free doesn't mean actually conditioning free but it means conditioned plus conditioning free so conditioning free diffusion performs two forward passes for each diffusion step one with the outputs of the auto regressive model and the speaker conditioning and one with no conditioning priors unconditional in a way or conditioning free and the output of the two is blended according to the conditioning free k value which we define here and conditioning free diffusion dramatically improves realism which was stated by the author of the tortoise architecture and how can we imagine this so conditioning is we have a stronger guidance signal to our model when denoising iteratively which helps us generating the mouse spectrogram that we actually desire but at the same time if we generate a mouse spectrogram without conditioning the model just generates any realistic high quality mouse spectrogram without being guided by a specific signal so it's a little bit more creative in a way and as it seems having this more creative output generation 
helps increasing the realism of the generated mouse spectrogram. And this is why the generation is done conditioning free. And the conditioning free K parameter here is defined to two. So here we can see as conditioning free K increases, the output becomes dominated by the conditioning free signal. And as you can see here, the output is the condition present output. So the conditioned output times conditioning free K plus one. In our case, that will be times three minus the conditioning absent output. So the conditioning free output times the conditioning free K, which in our case would be two. So in our case, the output is still dominated by the conditioned output. All right, and that's our diffusion sampler, which allows us to generate the mouse spectrogram and given a noisy image, we can use this space diffusion model to iteratively denoise this noisy image and generate, given our conditions, a corresponding mouse spectrogram. All right, and now as seen before, we can temporarily load the diffusion model to our VRAM using this. And we also don't wanna calculate any gradients so we invoke torch no grad which are only used during training and then we define an empty array in which we will store all the generated mouse spectrograms and iterate over the four latent representations inside our autoregressive model and as seen before we unsqueeze which means we add one dimensionality to our gpt latents then we determine the output sequence length of our diffusion model so kind of our mouse spectrogram as a one-dimensional vector and the way we do this is getting the second dimension Dimension. The first dimension would be this one of the GPT latents. So the length of the generated MEL token sequence and multiply it by four because the MEL codes compress a MEL spectrogram by factor of four. And now we want to decompress or reconstruct the MEL spectrogram from the MEL codes. Therefore, we sample up by factor of four. And since the variational autoencoder and the autoregressive model were trained on a sampling size of 22,050, but the vocoder that we will use in the next part was trained on a sampling rate of 24 kilohertz. We need to consider this when generating the mouse spectrogram using the diffusion decoder and therefore we divide 24,000 by 22,050 and this just means we don't get a float number but an integer value out of this division. Yes and our final output shape looks like this. So we have the GPT latent's first dimension which we added here. So this is more or less an empty dimensionality. So this value will be one and then we have 100 mel filter channels which the vocoder expects. So you can imagine this as a colored image where you have a red, green and blue channel and here we have 100 mel filter channels expected by the vocoder and then as a third dimensionality the output sequence length so the resolution of the mel spectrogram. And then as a next step we prepare our conditioning and kind of unify it as we have done it for the autoregressive model to one pre-computed embedding it's called here can also call it pre-computed conditioning. We invoke time step independent, which means our conditioning is independent of the denoising time step. So it will always be the same conditioning input or signal to our model. And here we pass the latent representations inside the autoregressive model, the diffusion conditioning or the speaker conditioning and our expected output sequence length so that we can expand our input conditioning to the output sequence length. And yeah, this is basically all the prep work we need and then we can define a noisy image which will be iteratively denoised during the diffusion or denoising process, the backward process that we saw earlier. And here we will just sample a random noisy image from a normal distribution in the size of the output shape and load it to the VRAM. And then we will iteratively denoise this noisy image by first defining the current time step as scalar. And as we saw earlier, this is a backward process. So we start with the value 250 and then go down to 249, 248. And we can also have a quick look at this again and output it as follows. And there you can see that we have a reverse list from 249 to zero. And this way modulate our backward process of the diffusion model. And here we define the current time step T times the output shape, which will be one. Technically, if we wanted to process it as a batch, we could have a higher number here. And then we will denoise the image at time step T using the pre-computed conditioning and the space diffusion sampler. So we take the sampler that we have initialized here and predict a denoised version of the input image at time step T using our diffusion model and our pre-computed embeddings or pre-computed conditionings. And then we will assign our image with the prediction from the diffusion model for the image at time step T minus one, so here, and we'll repeat this for the amount of desired diffusion steps that we have defined here which is 250. And once we are done and have fully denoised our image, we will then pan the image to the array that we defined in the start. So store our generated mouse spectrogram. And as you can see, this already brings us to part five. And running this code takes, depending on the GPU that you're using, more or less time. I'm using an NVIDIA RTX 6000 ADA GPU, which we can see here 
calling the NVIDIA hyphen SMI command. We can see the GPU here, which NVIDIA was kind enough to send me to support my channel to create more videos like this, in which I can investigate state of the art AI models. And the NVIDIA RTX 6008 GPU has 48 gigabytes of VRAM, it has 568 tensor cores, and a memory bandwidth of 960 gigabytes per second, which all in all makes it a super powerful GPU. And I'm super thankful to NVIDIA that they have sent me this GPU, which allows me to keep creating content for you guys. All right, and now we can run this code by just as always pressing command enter. And this took around 26 seconds generating all four mouse spectrograms. And I added this magic command to measure the time for generating those four mouse spectrograms. And now we can visualize them. But as you can see, we can't really listen to them yet, but that will be covered in the next part, part five, in which we take these mouse spectrograms and convert them to waveform audio, which we then can listen to and have finally generated our speech. Yes, and that's it for this video, part four, in which we saw how we can take the speaker conditioning and the latent representations of the autoaggressive model as inputs and starting from a noisy image sampled from a normal distribution using our diffusion decoder or diffusion model we iteratively denoise that image to finally generate a mouse spectrogram and in the next video in part 5 we will use the vocoder to take these mouse spectrograms and convert them to waveform audio which you then finally can listen to and have our generated speech and as always i'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video in part 5